Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be looking at circle theorems, so we'll be taking each theorem in turn, and then in a later video we'll actually look at some worked examples. The first circle theorem states, the angle subtended at the centre of a circle is twice the angle subtended at the circumference. Now, don't be phased by this word subtended. That just means you take two points on the circumference, suppose you take one there, one there, I'll join them across so you can see where the two points are. There's the centre of the circle, and if I go from one point up to the centre, back to the other point, this is the angle which is subtended at the centre of the circle. Same thing again, twice the angle subtended at the circumference, start from that point, draw a line from that point up to circumference, back down to the other point, this is the angle subtended at the circumference. And the theorem states, that this angle at the centre of the circle is twice the angle at the circumference. This theorem applies to many different situations, so they don't necessarily look as straightforward as the one I have just drawn. Imagine getting hold of that point of the circumference and moving it round the circumference in either direction, any diagram you get, the same theorem works. So I'll draw a couple of wobbly circles. The situation would be the same if you had a point there, a point there. There's the angle at the centre. The angle at the circumference, you might start from that point and join across the circumference over there. Same situation, this angle at the centre is twice the angle at the circumference. Another situation that might occur there's one point, there's your second point. Join up to the centre and back down. This time when I join the circumference, I'm going to go right through the centre and join the circumference like that. This angle at the centre is twice the angle of the circumference. So be prepared to apply this theorem in many different situations. The second theorem states that angles in the same segment are equal. Now the segment of a circle if I draw a chord across the circle, then this bottom bit is one segment and this top part is another segment. So angles in the same segment are equal. Start at one end of your chord, draw a line to anywhere on the circumference and go back to the other end of your chord. That angle is the same as start from one end of your chord Go to another part on your circumference, back to the other end of your chord, is the same as that angle. These two angles are in the same segment and they're equal. Another one, start from one end of your chord, cross the circumference, down to the other end of the chord, that angle is also equal. So angles in the same segment are equal. The third circle theorem really leads on from the first two. The third circle theorem states, the angle subtended in a semicircle is a right angle. So a semicircle is what you get when you draw a diameter. And the theorem says, subtended in a semicircle, so you start at one end of the diameter, go up to anywhere at all on the circumference, and go back to the other end of the diameter. And this angle here, is a right angle, 90 degrees. Now, if you think about the first circle theorem, it said the angle subtended at the center of a circle is twice the angle at the circumference. The angle at the center of the semicircle here is 180 degrees, and the angle at the circumference is 90 degrees, which is a right angle. The second circle theorem said angles subtended by an arc in the same segment are equal. Well, that applies to this one because no matter where you join to, so if I start at one end, join across to the circumference and back down to the other end of the diameter, that angle is still a right angle. So anywhere in that half, the angle of the circumference would be a right angle. The next theorem is a little bit different. The opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. A cyclic quadrilateral is just a quadrilateral, which is a shape with four sides drawn inside the circle. 
So you just start drawing across one, two, three, four. So any four sided shape is a cyclic quadrilateral where the corners touch the circumference of a circle. Then the theorem says the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. So if that angle is A degrees, the opposite one here is B degrees, and A degrees plus B degrees is equal to 180. And similarly, if the angle here is C degrees and the one over here is D degrees, then C degrees plus D degrees also equals 180. And as you can see, if you add all four angles together, you would get 360 degrees, which is indeed the sum of the interior angles of any quadrilateral. So the next theorem says the angle between a chord, and a chord is a line which goes across the circle, the angle between a chord and a tangent, and a tangent is a line which just touches the circle, so the angle between the chord and the line is this one here. That angle is equal to the angle subtended in the opposite segment. Now, if you remember, a chord divides a circle into two segments. So this bit here is one segment. This bit over here is the opposite segment. So if I start from one end of the chord and go to anywhere on the circumference, and join it back to the other end of the chord, this is the angle which is subtended in that segment. And those two angles are equal to each other. So the angle between a chord and a tangent is equal to the angle subtended in the opposite segment. The last theorem is something called the intersecting chords theorem. And again, there are two versions and it depends whether the chords intersect inside the circle or outside the circle. So we're going to have two chords. A chord just goes across the circle. So I'll draw one chord going across there and call that A and that B. And then another chord going across the circle. Let's call that C and that D. And where they cross is the point X. And the intersecting chords theorem says that the distance from A to X multiplied by the difference from B to X is equal to the distance from C to X multiplied by the distance from D to X. In other words, that distance AX multiplied by that distance BX is the same as that distance CX multiplied by that distance DX. And then the other version of the intersecting chords theorem is when the chords cross outside the circle. So draw a chord starting at A, across to B, and extend it outside the circle. There's my point A, there's my point B. Another chord, somewhere up here, I'm going to come across outside the circle so this time they are going to intersect at that point. So I'll call that point C, that point D, and this time that is my point X. So the two chords are crossing outside the circle. Now the rule is still the same. The distance from A to X multiplied by the distance from B to X is the same as the distance from C to X multiplied by the distance from D to X. And this time it looks like this. There's the distance from A to X. So that distance multiplied by BX is the same as the distance from C to X multiplied by the distance from D to X. It looks very different, but the rule is the same.